1984 won't be like 1984. Get your iPod. iPod's here. Do you like your Macintosh? Do you like your Macintosh? Your Macintosh. Up, up. Hi, my name is Liz O'Donnell, and I'm responsible for LinkedIn's international development. Okay, so uh, who's LinkedIn and what's LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn is the world's largest professional networking site. We've got over 11 million members worldwide. Uh, it's sort of like a social networking site, mm -hmm. but much more focused on business purposes. So any professional can come online, create a profile, and find other professionals, get answers, okay. find a job, things okay. like that. Okay. Um, you should come a little bit more in this direction, otherwise you're not in camera <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, what's the story behind uh, LinkedIn? How did uh, everything start? LinkedIn started, uh, the site was actually launched uh, almost exactly four years ago, mm -hmm. but uh, the idea for it came in the late 90s when social networking first started and uh, you know, Reid Hoffman and, and some other people were talking about, well, what does it take to uh, launch a networking site? What's missing right now? Um, Reid then went on to join PayPal. Um, and so a couple years later when he left PayPal, mm -hmm. a bunch of people got together again, realized that there was no, well there was a lot of social networking sites popping up, there was nothing strictly focused for the professional, uh, and that was really around the co-founders and their needs, and they wanted a way to manage a professional network, which yep. was different from putting your profile online, which, you know, was tended to be more dating purposes or meeting mm. friends. Um, so a bunch of people got together in late 2002, okay. uh, formed a, a company, and the site was launched in May of 2003. Okay. Um, how many users uh, have you approximately right now on LinkedIn? We've got 11 million users right now. Okay. Uh, That's huge. <laughs> so. That's like Belgium, actually. It's, <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> it's the whole like the whole Belgium being on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, we've really uh, in the beginning because it's all been seeded by mostly people inviting each other. Okay. So we don't do a lot of marketing. Um, most of our members come in through other members rather than signing up cold. So it's taken a while to really take off, but then we find once people start using it, it becomes very much a part of their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are those network effects mm -hmm. and its growth is actually yeah. accelerating. Okay, it might explain why I'm, I, have, I have a possible network of 600,000 people. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> 600,000 people and I only have like, I don't know, 300 direct connections? Yeah, exactly. So we uh, we look at both what we call the second and third degree connections. So your first degree connections are the people you know directly. And that you don't need a website to manage. You, you can manage yeah. just on your own. Uh, but we find that the real power of the network comes from the second and third degree connections, who, who your friends know yeah. and then who they know. Uh, and that's where you really start to find interesting uh, things and, and answers to questions and resources you didn't know you had access to before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, and the other way around, some people knowing me realize, oh, he knows this guy. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's, the, it's the whole six degrees of separation yeah, yeah. Uh, shrunk down a bit. Okay, so I'm now just thinking when I'm going to reach Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, you, you could be very close. You never know. It just yeah. takes connecting to one person yeah, and yeah. Uh, that could be it. Okay, so that's for the number of users. How many employees here? We've got about 85 right now. Okay. Um, this is our main office in Mountain View, California. We've also got an office for customer service in Omaha and uh, a sales office in New York. Okay. So a total of about 85 in okay. those three offices. Oh, um, did it everything grow uh, in terms of uh, both the company, the employees and the users over the years? Uh, both, you know, in the beginning fairly slowly. Um, Again, from the user perspective, um, when there's a really small network, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. So I joined in 2003 simply because so many people invited me to join, but I had a profile and it just kind of sat there. It didn't do anything. I didn't do anything with mm -hmm. it. For actually a couple of years, I, I added contacts, but it just basically sat there. Uh, and then when I started to try and use it more actively, by that time I had a much larger network. Um, and you know, when I was looking for uh, to try and connect to a particular person, that's when yeah. I realized. So, and that ha that's the case with a lot of people with you know um, with a small network in the beginning that LinkedIn had in 2003. There's not a whole lot you can do with yeah. it. Um, so it really did take time for the network to grow enough to be really be 
useful yeah. uh, for the people that were already in it. Um, and I, from the employee side, um, it didn't explode right away either. So really, um, last year we were probably at, at 60 people. Okay. Uh, we've now gotten to 85 and we're really looking to grow aggressively actually over the next year. Okay. There is something I love in, in LinkedIn. I've been starting using LinkedIn like six months ago, but never really used it like, like kind of waiting to know somebody who knows somebody and then one day I discovered this I'm gonna look at your address book in Gmail like okay go and check it out and then it resulted in like 300 people <laughs> and your address book are on LinkedIn <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's obviously why we designed that feature, because it is getting to a critical mass when yeah. you know, people in certain circles, particularly in technology, IT, internet, um, are very connected. A lot of people they know do have profiles, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it becomes a pretty obvious application mm -hmm. um, yeah. for people in that yeah. circle. And, and I guess like a lot of people like me uh, won't realize the power of their address book before that they go through uh, this LinkedIn uh, wonderful feature. It's true. Um, it's a bit of a catch-22 sometimes because you need an incentive to add your address book, but without uh, a decent number of connections, there's not a whole lot you can do with the tool. But once mm -hmm. you add 20 or 30 connections, then you can really start to discover yeah. what information you can get out of it and who you know and yeah. who you can access. Because sometimes networking is, is a bit of a dirty word in business, um, but it's just simply using your existing network to find answers, to recommend, mm -hmm. you know, lawyers, PR firms, um, access people for interviews, yep. really anything. It's, you know, almost everyone does networking. Yep. So um, it's really just sitting down and making sure that you set yourself up. And then once you start trying to do things with the network, then people find it really mm -hmm. useful. Do you have any feedback from users or any statistics? Because I can pretty much imagine that a lot of people are not fond about um, a, a, about a, a website going through your address book. It's kind of it's kind of the the insurance guy coming at home and looking in, into um, where do you have something empty where you don't have an insurance. <laughs> sure, I mean, so everything we do, we give the users a choice. Yeah. So we don't go through a user's address book without yeah. them initiating that process. Oh, I'm sorry, I was already in your address book. <laughs> <laughs> right. We don't, you know, send out emails to all their contacts yeah. without, um, you know, asking the user first uh, because ultimately that reflects badly on yeah. us. Um, we give the users privacy. We don't allow uh, people to easily connect with everyone else in the network because we really do try and protect and preserve the network. Yeah. Now, you know, individual users can expand that. They can say, hey, let anybody contact me, or they can contract that, say, I don't, don't want to be contacted by anyone. Yeah. So we really try and focus very much on giving the user's choice how we use their information, mm -hmm. whether it's their personal profile or their contacts. Yeah, 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 because um, that's something people should know is once you do that, you can pretty much take the whole day for checking the mails that you get from Gmail, from LinkedIn saying, oh, this person accepted you, this person <laughs> accepted you. I spent a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I recommend that you go through your contact preferences too yeah. before you do that. Yeah, well, I, I just selected all the guys being in my address book that are on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. So uh, then I get emails like, is there a prefer preference where you could say, I'm not willing to get the email, the confirmation email of this person has added me? Because at the beginning, I was like clicking on the guy's name or the girl's name and I was like, oh, who's that? Uh, it's in my address book, so I want to check what they do. But so I did it for like 20 emails and then I said like, okay, 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 next one, next one. I don't want to know who it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do give you the choice of, of what sort of emails you want to receive versus versus not, and okay. some people do suppress it for that reason. But we also encourage people, when they build their network, to build it really with, with people they know and trust. Um, and if you have a very large address book, sometimes you're connecting to people you don't even know or yeah. don't even remember. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, one way to manage it is is by really managing to your close network first, yeah. and then perhaps adding people in stages mm. later on. Yeah, I mean, because um, I clicked on this button who says only add the people that are in LinkedIn, not like invite the people to come to LinkedIn, because uh -huh. I'm not crazy about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but still, there was still a lot of people. So, uh, <laughs> well, in your sort of business, there would be. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Um, is it more like US-centric, or does it work uh, internationally? Because we're more like in Europe, mm -hmm. and I didn't really hear about LinkedIn a lot in Europe. Sure. Um, so of our 11 million members, half are in the US and mm -hmm. half are outside the US. 
uh, and the breakdown of that half outside of the US is right now we've got almost 4 million members in Europe. Okay. So we are the largest uh, business networking site in Europe uh, at the moment. Um, our top five countries in Europe, which are our top 10 overall, are the UK, France, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, and um, Italy okay. as well. So, you know, the, the major countries, plus the Netherlands, are quite strong in the Northern Europe, Scandinavia mm -hmm. as well. So countries that have, yeah. um, you know, quite dense, quite technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we, we are big in Europe. We don't do large media push. We we don't do marketing in Europe, but we don't really do marketing anywhere in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, yeah. it's all a... In terms of international, are you guys localized or is it nor, uh, only in English? Currently, we're only in English and we, we definitely are looking to um, how do we localize into uh, other languages. So we're, mm. we're quite lucky in that English is the global language, but we also recognize that with an English-only product that we're limiting our, our potential for growth. Mm -hmm. So we will look into localizing in different languages, um, but we want to do it correctly and properly mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. just do it quickly. Yeah. Without giving any names, um, I know there are some big names out there in LinkedIn. You had like kind of an incentive a few weeks ago or whatever to get the be linked into this guy, for example, I don't know, a Google guy or whatever. Um, an incentive? It, uh, it might not come from, from, from LinkedIn, I don't remember, but it, I think it was like get the contact to LinkedIn uh, to this guy and you will access to other's book because obviously there are some guys out there pretty well known in the industry using LinkedIn, right? It's true, yeah. We didn't, um, I don't think that was an incentive of ours, but different people certainly do um, have marketing campaigns yeah. or even entire businesses on teaching people how to use LinkedIn um, uh, because it is certainly a valuable business tool and there's enough people who are mm -hmm. experts mm -hmm. at it. Um, you know, one of the reasons we do maintain our, our privacy levels that the way we do is so that important people feel like they can be on LinkedIn without receiving a lot of spam. Yeah. So as a result, we do have a lot of high profile people, largely often in technology or venture capital uh, and politics as well. Um, so people, um, you know, we don't, generally we don't cultivate those relationships individually, yeah. um, but it's getting to a point, certainly in, in technology, where it's very useful for someone of any level really to help mm -hmm. manage their contacts. Yeah. I'll, I'll the, um the amount of people being in the technology in the IT in comparison to the other because um, there is a list of what you do in terms of in, will, in which uh, branch you are and there is like a lot of things I couldn't f uh, figure out some of my jobs I couldn't figure out where to put them yeah. um, but I guess it's a lot of people in the IT using LinkedIn right? IT is probably our strongest uh, industry on a global basis and in any one country it tends to be number one or two. Um, it's a very large field, it's a very natural fit with LinkedIn. Um, so IT technology, internet, uh, but also fields like marketing and advertising, financial services and uh, consulting yeah. are also very popular. So people who really need a large network, need to contact other people, need to find information, mm -hmm. rather than people who tend to work more on their own. Yeah. Um, and so IT and consulting and, and marketing tend to fit in those categories. Okay. Um, you guys are working with some companies like Plexo, uh, any other companies? Yeah, so Plaxo had uh, built an application that works with us. You know, they have more of an address book, so that certainly works well with our functionality. Um, we're not proactively working with any other major companies to share, although I think that going forward, certainly partnerships uh, should be a bigger part of our strategy as we look to expand and increase the utility of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, uh, those uh, 11 million should be 6.5 billion. <laughs> it's the, the goal. It's like Jenny.com. It's their goal is also to have the whole world. Yeah. Did you did you visit Jenny? Uh, Jenny? Not yet. Okay. But uh, it's it's the common point between the two is one day or another you should have everybody or at least everybody having an internet connection. I would guess. Yeah. Well, our goal is still to focus on the professional. Um, so certainly of the 6.5 billion people in the world, um, you know, only a fraction of that is a professional. Um, a fraction of 6.5 billion is still a very large market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we do want to stay focused on the professional because we think that's uh, one factor that distinguishes us from other networking sites. And 
by maintaining this level of professionalism um, that helps us retain our, our current member base. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to do anything that that pollutes that. Yeah, yeah. One of the goal of being on LinkedIn is to get a job. Um, um, how does it work? There is, I know there is a lot of job seekers on, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. There is also probably a lot of people relying completely on LinkedIn to manage their CV. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, because the personal profile is the first step of of building your presence on LinkedIn, it's the first thing you do, it's, it's your identity, um, we look at the world um, from a job perspective, um, we split it between passive candidates and active candidates. So active candidates are the people who are out there looking for a job, going to job sites, going to company sites, you know, proactively um, looking for that. So we have job postings on our own site, mm -hmm. and so that's one way people can find jobs. Another way is if they're an active job seeker, they're looking for a particular company, yeah. they can find the contacts, who do they know in that company, who can they contact, you know, really target their area. Um, but we have another larger category of people who we call passive job seekers. Yeah. People who have a profile on online, they're not looking for a job particularly, they're not going to our jobs tab or to other job sites online. <clears throat> But if someone contacted them about a job, they'd be open to it. So we definitely have um, recruiters and other hiring managers at companies using LinkedIn to try and identify these passive job candidates to say, hey, you might be happy enough in your current job, but yeah. would you be open to another opportunity? Okay. Um, so those are some of the ways that people use it to find mm -hmm. jobs and candidates. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a different ways of finding uh, people in your network, like you can, I, I was surprised, for example, that you can find your old uh, schoolmates, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, it's true. Um, Some people found me this way. <laughs> like, I don't want you to find me, but you... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And and just as an FYI, you can unconnect from people that you okay. connected to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I hate the school, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, no, yeah, we do make it very easy for people to connect with old classmates or old colleagues. Um, for everyone else, we try and verify uh, via an email address. So we don't want everyone just randomly trying to connect to everyone else, but certainly people you've worked with in the past or gone to university with. And that's a really easy way to start building your network. Yeah. Certainly that's how I started. Um, I added a school and then immediately I had access to hundreds and hundreds of people, some of whom I knew and some of whom I didn't. So I took the ones I knew and yeah. added them very easily. Yeah. Well, it's really funny actually to find somebody 10 years later. It is. Well, you know, one thing is um, I, 10 years ago I worked at uh, in Japan and at that time, I don't think even think we had email addresses. Yeah. Um, so I certainly didn't have anyone's email address from that time. Yeah. And I had uh, my initial profile. I had just had my current job and you know maybe one or two schools. But I filled out my profile. I added my job in Japan ten years ago. And within a week, I had three people contact me who I hadn't seen or talked to in ten years who are all in different parts of the globe right now, but we'd worked together 10 years ago. They saw that I had added my company profile mm -hmm. then, and we immediately connected. Okay. Uh, and then one of them is uh, quite a high-profile marketing person in the internet world. Another friend of mine a couple weeks later said, oh, I'm launching my company's Japan site. Yeah. Can you introduce me? And we made that introduction, and all because I simply just updated my profile. Mm -hmm. There's a feature in LinkedIn who says your profile or whatever, or your, I think it's your profile, is 80% or 85% complete. How does the algorithm work? <laughs> it's kind of a mystery sometimes. That's very top secret yeah, information. Because <laughs> you never reach 100. Uh, I've actually reached 100. Whoa. Yeah, I, well, you know, I'm yeah, employee. You've been working like 100 hours on your profile. I guess so. Well, I guess I'll tell you some of the features of my profile. Um, I, I haven't actually asked how that algorithm works, yeah. although I know who writes it. Um, so things like filling in at least one education section, current job, and, and maybe one past job if we see there's a big gap. Uh, a summary profile, so a lot of people don't fill out that summary. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of a free form field for you to fill in what you want to say about yourself, and it's a really good opportunity to present yourself as you want to be seen. Yeah. Um, so really managing your online reputation instead of relying on you know articles that were written about you, you know, someone else ten years ago or five years ago. Um, adding keywords so again if you want to be found for a particular expertise or a job or you know any sort of contact adding in keywords you can be found things like podcasting or uh, whatever your skills are um, 
recommendations by other people. Yeah. So that's another way to help you know build your profile. What do other people say about mm -hmm. you? Um, how do you want to be contacted? So just going um, step by step through the field. Okay. It's not particularly text heavy, mm -hmm. but just making sure that all of those fields are complete mm -hmm. will get you to 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, it's pretty easy to manage your uh, network if you have a small network. Once you start having a couple of hundreds of people in your network, it, it starts to be a little bit more tricky. What would you recommend people to do uh, to find out there's somebody in their network, to manage their network once they start. I mean, after 500 you don't see anymore, you see 500 plus, which is good, I think, because um, it's kind of a privacy level. Uh, but 500 is already a lot to manage. I only have 300 and I, I, can't, I can't cope anymore with it. It is a lot, although I guess it, it also depends how you define manage. So I'm obviously on LinkedIn all the time, all day, every day. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's easier for me because it's definitely a company sanctioned activity. Um, I, I find it very interesting you know, when I see my connections adding people, um, but I don't necessarily have to click on that. It's, it's very tempting. So um, you know, manage it like you would your email inbox. Yeah. Um, you know, some things you can ignore, some things mm -hmm. it's really just for information only. Um, or go periodically, check your LinkedIn inbox, batch process these invitations to connect or, or to recommend. Because it's definitely a site that gets more and more interesting. Yeah. It gets really addictive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but just like email, you know, you can it's manage It's the second it. life of networking. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's like, you know, an approved second life yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I see that there is a lot of people here using Macs, right? We're, we're a podcast about Apple mainly. Yeah. We are also focusing on Web 2.0. It's kind of a Mac shop here, or it was more even in the past, I think. Uh, I think it might have been in the past. Reed Hoffman, the co-founder, used to work at Mac uh, way back when. Uh, he used to, sorry, he used to work at Apple. Yeah. Um, and so he's a Mac fan. You know, a lot of the real Silicon Valley people are Mac fans. Yeah. Um, to be sure. So um, here, some people use the Macs, some of the designers in particular, uh, some of the engineers. Uh, the, the default standard is, is a PC because I think our network admins find it easier, but uh, if you make a strong case, you can have a Mac in place of a PC or even as a, uh, well, a supplement too. Actually, if you say, I'm not going to work for anything. <laughs> yeah. And of course, if you're Reed Hoffman, you can have anything you want yeah, here. Yeah. So. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I was working here with uh, with Macs and PCs and uh, with a mix, and actually you have to be sure so that everything works on the Mac and on the PC. For yeah, LinkedIn. yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I've heard it works quite well, um, according to the people I've talked to that have yeah. used both. Because I've always been curious yeah. um, about the the interface, and everyone's everyone's pretty happy mm -hmm. with the. Uh, Compatibility. Okay. So uh, no yeah. complaints yeah. that I've heard. So LinkedIn is on a, is on the web. Is there any desktop applications or any communication with any desktop applications you guys do? So we have built uh, a couple of things for that are desktop applications. One is called the LinkedIn Toolbar, okay. um, and another is called LinkedIn Project. Um, toolbar is downloadable by by anyone. And that will help you when you receive an email. Uh, you can see if that contact is on LinkedIn. If they're not, um, and you can pop up windows that uh, have their basic, basic profile information. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of an integration yeah. with um, generally Outlook or um, uh, we also have a Firefox, uh, Firefox or IE. Okay. Um, and Project is a more sophisticated contact management system that's available with some of our premium subscriptions. And Project really helps you manage your inbox um, to say, how do I know this person? When's the last time I contacted with them? Maybe it's time for me to follow up with them again. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of downloads that we do have okay. for desktop. Okay. It's a good introduction to the premium subscriber. What, uh, which advantages do you have if you start paying? Yeah, sure. So the basic advantages with premium subscriptions, uh, besides the, the project, uh, are really the ability to find and contact people outside of your network. Mm -hmm. So the more you grow your own network, like you said, you have a few hundred, I've got maybe 250 or so. With 250 direct contacts, I can access about a million and a half people yeah. uh, within a third degree. 
um, but that still leaves another 10 million people yeah. that I can't. So with a premium subscription, I'm able to find them. So let's say I'm in business development and I'm looking for a very specific type of person at a specific company. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not in my network, um, and I have a premium subscription, I can still contact them via in-mail. So I won't, you know, oh, yeah. link, LinkedIn won't show you um, that person's name necessarily or, e or certainly not their email address, but you can send them a message directly. You see someone who's in charge of business development at a company you're looking at, send them an in-mail, LinkedIn will send them a message and they'll receive it and then the recipient can say, you know, yes, I'll accept this contact and they'll give you their email address or phone number yeah. uh, or no, but you're able to contact them directly without knowing their name, email address, or, or some other identifying details. Okay. Um, and so that's really the, the advantage of a subscription is being able to find and then contact people outside of your network. Okay, so that's one business model of, of, uh, of LinkedIn, the premium subscriber. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Uh, so subscriptions are about half of the revenue. Um, the other half comes from two streams. One is the job postings. So uh, any individual or company is able to post a job uh, on our website under mm -hmm. the jobs tab. And um, it is basically like a jobs listing, but with the network attached to it. So let's say I, for example, I'm listing a job. Um, the people in my network will see that job. It may pop up on their home page. It'll say, you know, your friends are hiring. Uh, it really distributes my job throughout my network. Um, and then another 25% of the revenue comes from advertising. We have advertisements on our homepage and search and some of our profile. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty funny. I'm thinking about something. If somebody is finding um, a guy from LinkedIn and tries to hire him, because he sees his profile on LinkedIn, it's actually funny. <laughs> That's true. Although I guess, it's I mean... Bad. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, first of all, hopefully we're trying to build a, a great place to work yeah. so that people want to stay. Um, but second of all, it, it really is, LinkedIn is about empowering the individual. Yeah. So, you know, if that should happen, it happens. It happens. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's a testament to the power yeah. of the tool. It's like a relationship. If it happens, it happens. I always say to my life, to my wife, uh, if it has to happen, it will happen. So, yeah, it's true. Um, it's that's true. That's the reason why I'm not jealous at all because je jealousy doesn't bring anything. If it happens, it will happen, anyways. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but then it should be like a big badge, like, oh, this is a LinkedIn employee. Don't touch it. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess no email. <laughs> probably our computer, our engineers can build something into the system yeah. where you know blocks all incoming yeah. mail without me knowing it. So yeah, yeah that's the <laughs> Boss is getting an email. He's being in contact with them. Or you know, set up alerts to the. Scene. Yeah, 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 if we get job inquiries. Uh. What's the future of uh, LinkedIn? Uh, well, the future of LinkedIn, so we're going to really grow, uh, company-wise, we're going to grow, probably double our employees. Okay. Um, so we're really skilled to grow because we, we want to grow in a few different areas. Uh, one, internationally, as I mentioned before, but two, um, We've got a great network, mm -hmm. and that is really the value and the power of LinkedIn. And so we're always trying to find ways of how do you really use that network. So jobs is one way to do it. Uh, we launched something called Answers in January, which is another application of, okay, we've got this network of however many million people. What do you use a network for? Yeah. Well, to get advice, to find out... Um, problems and, and to find out answers to those problems. So um, we launched Answers in January and it's very business focused again, like mm -hmm. everything else on LinkedIn, um, but it really shows the value of a network. Um, so someone can ask a question in any business uh, related field. Um, let's take legal. Someone's mm -hmm. looking say, hey, can you recommend a, a patent attorney? Yeah. Um, for this sort of company, and then other people will see that question, answer it, and we found that I think it's 50% of answer of questions get answered within four hours. Okay. Um, and so not only you can get answers, but because uh, there's a profile attached to those answers, you can kind of judge, you know, is this person credible or not? So someone who's a startup executive or someone who works for a law firm 
probably give a pretty good answer on, on a good patent lawyer, yep. whereas someone who um, is, you know, completely outside of the field, you might not trust that answer so much. So it's the combination of using a large network, but also the profiles attached to those answers that really makes answers a powerful combination. So over time, we want to develop more applications like that to say, all right, we've got a large network. How do you use a network? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to have a little walk here and look at the offices. There is a lot of empty space, so that's the reason why you just moved, because you want to fill those places, I guess. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. We, want, we certainly want a home that we can grow into and not grow out of in a year's time. So, you know, we're hopefully here for yeah. a couple of years. Okay. And got a, a nice new office yeah. here for us. <laughs> okay. okay, let's have a look. Okay, yeah. great. So this is where some of the uh, engineering and IT teams sit. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty standard Silicon Valley cubes. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of Macs here, by the way, <laughs> which is uh, my listeners and my viewers are going to be really happy. Because <laughs> otherwise, in every single company where you run, there is only Windows. Uh, yeah. Well, like I said, we like to give people a choice, yeah. some people anyway. So there's, there's two things that uh, I think every Silicon Valley startup, if you call us a startup, needs to have. One is a good game room and one is a good kitchen. Yeah. So this is the game room. The door is closed, so we'll see who's in there. Who's not working, actually? Hey there. Hey, we're doing a podcast now. Oh, really? Cool. <laughs> so we're on the podcast now? We're... we're we was watching, looking at who's networking currently. <laughs> currently we are. <laughs> Except for networking in a really different way. Test, testing the Wii connection with, the link, with LinkedIn. Yes, yes, yes. So what is this podcast for? Like, which side or...? It's a podcast, uh, it's basically a podcast about Apple normally, but we extend to Web 2.0. And oh. uh, we're based in Europe and we're in four languages like English, Span Spanish, French and German. And what's the name of the podcast? Palmcast. This one. Oh, nice. <laughs> Palmcast. Because palm means apple in French. Oh, really? Okay. Cool. So, did you guys already manage to break to break the TV set? No. Not yet. <laughs> we're trying. We're because everybody, really it's it's you know, it's the goal, the ultimate goal of the Wii. Exactly. <laughs> I'm so trying. You to have the revision B, right? Yes. The one who stays. No, okay. I'm trying to tie this real loose so it just goes flying off and either hits him, who's my competitor in this game. Yeah. Oh, it's the TV and breaks. You know they know they exactly. they do know they actually do know TV sets specially prepared for the Wii. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With the protection glass. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you wanna see Okay, you let's go. move ahead. Oh, I said? Yeah. Sure. That's funny. I want the yeah. horse set, right? So when we moved into this office, um, we probably quadrupled the size of our game room. Oh yeah, it's, it's pretty huge actually. <laughs> it's massive. You yeah. still have places for some other games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, obviously the least used yeah. machines are the exercise machines in the corner. Uh -huh. Not yeah. quite as popular as people. Yeah. yeah, I can understand that. I would be also stick at the Wii. Well, the Wii is a little bit of exercise too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a typical gaming console. So the rest of it is, is one corner looks pretty much the same as the others. Yeah. Uh, but how is it superior though? Where are which guys and uh Yeah. So um, these guys right here are our design team again. Okay. Pretty Mac heavy area. Okay. <laughs> Other podcast? Taking a month or two? Like the one that's the modal dialogue. You've got the uh, PC and the Mac, huh? I do. I've got them all. Yeah. I'm collecting them all. <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> like. Wow. Got some product management teams over there, uh, engineering teams here. And again, lots of space to grow. Yeah. Now that's pretty big here, actually. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, people have uh, scooters, actually, to get around the office sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see anyone. 
No segways? <laughs> no segways. Because that's, that's the question I asked to us. What's more exciting, the segway or the iPhone? Oh, right. Because it's like the super segway fan. <laughs> he has three or four segways. Seriously? Wow. Uh, this is getting into our inner analytics team. Yeah. Hey. That's the guy who uh, built the logic that tells you that your profile is 100% okay. complete or not. <laughs> That's the guy I have to ask. <laughs> Why do I only have 98 person? Exactly. I'm missing two persons. <laughs> this is our sales area. Okay. Some offices and then... And then we're going to head over to the kitchen because you said it's exactly. two more important p uh, rooms. <laughs> kitchen and playing room. Exactly. Yeah. As long as the job is done, people can stay the whole day in the kitchen. Oh, well, I think that's probably the idea. They bring in lunch, there's enough left over for dinner. Hey there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is our recruiter. She's very busy. Taking picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here's some of the Yeah, so here's some of the rubber base we got over here. You want to take my picture now? Or <laughs> okay. okay, that's also like a really nice place to be here. Oh, yeah, this is great. So we've got a pizza lunch every Wednesday. There's no, uh, there's no restaurant in the whole area. Yeah. Unless you consider Google. That's to be that's a what I was wondering. Yeah, Google is the free restaurant where everybody goes. <laughs> so everyone tries to get friends at Google. It's I just heard that some restaurant. Yahoo guys are going there to eat. Oh really? Because it's free. It's and it's really and good. And not at Yahoo. <laughs> so I've got so. one friend at Google and trying to get more. Yeah. That's the thing. Search Google on uh, on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's an underused application of yeah. LinkedIn to find okay. free lunch. So that's pretty much it? Yeah, that is pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Left our space and okay. far too many choices.